You know, this just keeps getting funnier by the day. And at this point, this is just comic relief for me right now. I know people are out there saying, B, why are you even responding to these guys? It's a joke. It makes no sense. No matter what you say, they're not going to listen. And I get that. But you know what? Now I'm just having fun with it. I mean, this is just basically for entertainment value for me. I'm actually enjoying laughing every day, reading these people's comments, and looking at some of these people's videos. You know, I read the document. And supposedly, I contradicted myself when I read this document. I don't know how. Please point out to me how I contradicted myself because I just don't see it. Now, basically, I talked about the March 1st date and how in that document it says, on or before March 1st, if under one microgram is detected in an athlete's system, then that is allowed. And after... March 1st, then an investigation can be done, can be done to see if the drug was not taken by the athlete this year. Okay? So it can be done. And it is up to the body, the sanctioning body or, or the athletic organization to make a decision based on that evidence if they do want to suspend the athlete. But let's look at the empirical data here. And let's look at all of these athletes that have come up positive for this drug. And let's look at all the cases, because I've looked at a numerous amount of cases here. I've, I've not seen one case be overturned here. I mean, all the athletes that had this drug in their system this year, they were suspended. I mean, a whole Russian hockey team was suspended because a few athletes on that team had this drug in their system. So, let's look at the evidence here. One false negative, possibly. Two false negatives, highly unlikely, but maybe. Three false negatives, virtually impossible. I mean, is the technology that bad that they would make three mistakes? They would miss three positive results in a row? And then, all of a sudden, out of the blue, have a positive come up? I mean, that that's to me, that's almost virtually impossible. Again, I'm not a chemist, not a lawyer, but that's some pretty strong circumstantial evidence against Alexander Povetkin. So where is this miracle evidence that's going to pop up out of the blue that's going to clear Alexander Povetkin's name, that's going to prove that he did not take this drug this year? Where is that going to come from? Explain to me. Is Johnny Cochran, may he rest in peace, going to all of a sudden rise out of the grave and, and, and ask Alexander Povetkin to put on a glove and if it doesn't fit, you must acquit? That's not going to happen here. I don't see that. We're, the Hail Mary pass is not going to be thrown by Doug Flutie here. I just don't see that happening. This is so funny how you guys need Povetkin to be innocent so bad here. Why is it so emotionally charged for you? This us against them, this black against white, this Russian versus U.S. thing. Why is it come to this for you guys? It's ridiculous. And then you could sit there and bring up all these other... Examples about Luis Ortiz and Francisco Vargas and you know all the other cases in the past, um, Lucas Brown. Okay, but show me one video or even two or three videos where other YouTubers have come out and defended these guys. I'm not saying everyone attacked these guys, but did anyone come out and make videos defending these guys? Saying they were innocent? Saying they didn't take the drug? Saying they shouldn't be suspended? Did anyone come out and make a video and say, Oh, Lucas Brown, I can't believe what they're doing to Lucas Brown. He should come out. He, he should never have been suspended. How many videos from the people that you're criticizing or, or that, from the people that are being criticized, how many videos did they make defending Lucas Brown or defending Luis Ortiz or defending any other athlete that tested positive? I, I don't see any 
any uh, YouTubers coming out and being the, the lawyer for these guys, like like some people here on YouTube are being the lawyer for Alexander Povetkin. Alexander Povetkin is a millionaire. He's a very wealthy athlete. He already has a legal team. He already has a manager. He already has all these people working on this for him. He doesn't need some, some random YouTubers to come out and start defending him here. Like they're going to save Alexander Povetkin. They're going to prevent Alexander Povetkin from being suspended or, 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 or from losing his mandatory status here. So this is just a joke, man. This is just a joke. So you, so basically, you know, you, you guys are going to hold on to this till the very end, you know, and you're looking for some miracle evidence to pop up out of, out of nowhere to prove that he did not take this drug this year. Listen, I'm looking at this objectively. I am looking at this 100% objectively, and I just don't see any way how he can prove that he did not take this drug this year. I don't even care if he took a speck of it this year. So what would be the reasoning for him to even take such a small amount if it didn't help him? And if this drug is so ineffective, then why are all of these athletes taking it for no reason? For no reason. This isn't like just a Flintstones vitamin here. I mean, it's not something that, that is normally taken by, by uh, people. This is a drug that basically is used for coronary artery disease. It's used for heart problems. And again, you're not going to sit there and tell me that Alexander Povetkin has a heart problem. Maria Sharapova came out and said she had medical issues. She showed people that she had uh, a prescription for this drug. Alexander Povetkin has not done that. There is no reason for him to take this drug. So why would he just randomly take this drug? Why? Does it taste good? I mean, is it, is, is, does it get him high? I mean, it, <laughs> what is the reason for him to take this drug? This is just so funny, man. So I'm sure there are going to be a thousand people coming out, leaving comments, still trying to defend Alexander Povetkin. Look. He got his hand caught in the cookie jar. It is what it is. Just deal with it. It's very likely that he is going to lose his mandatory status and that this fight does not happen. Because people are saying, oh, well, this case hasn't gotten any better or any worse. Yeah, but it already started out worse for Pavekin because the fight got postponed. Okay? Deontay Wilder is having another fight. Does Alexander Povetkin have another fight scheduled? Okay. So, I mean, th th this isn't about getting better or worse. This already is worse for him. He's already losing out on money here. He's already losing out on a fight. And unfortunately or fortunately, however you want to look at it, right now, he pretty much is guilty until, until he can provide evidence to support that he has not taken this drug this year. Because right now, all of the evidence points to him taking this drug this year. So yeah, right now it is up to him to prove his innocence. Right now, yeah, he is guilty until he can prove his innocence. Because you have to take those three negative tests into account here and you just can't totally disregard them. For someone to say, oh, well, you know, it is possible to have three false negatives. <laughs> that does not make sense. Please do not insult my intelligence or insult anyone else's intelligence here. So again, it is what it is. I pretty much said all I had to say. Until next time, Beeb is out. And once again, thank you all for watching. Peace.